Ladies and gentlemen, sorry about the wait. We are back now, however, and we are jumping straight into it. 3-0 is the scores on the board in favor of UK Esports. Fierce setting on top as the bomb is going down. Welcome back, Ben. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I've watched slightly more of this than you have. So originally it did look like Pact were in slightly more control uh, than they are at the moment. Certainly left in this one versus one with Fry being the man with it all on his shoulders and just 8 HP. Sydney does have a smoke grenade, but what use is it going to be in this position? Fry is sort of countered any kind of smoke diffuse you're going to want to expect. Sydney is going to have to peek this angle soon enough. I don't know why Fry decides to keep sitting in that corner for so long, but Sydney is going to manage to win that round. Pack do get their first one on the board, but Fierce Esports, they took the first three of the game, ladies and gentlemen. So looks like Inferno is doing better for them than at least Mirage was. I mean, for sure. Again, ladies and gentlemen, sorry uh, for the delay. We had a bit of a, a mix-up on the IPs, but uh, we are back now, and we are going to be chugging along this train till the bitter end. And, uh, I mean, fortunately, we haven't had the, the privilege of seeing how the rest of this game has turned out. But Fizz, looking like they're, they're being a little stronger here. Although, judging from what I just saw there, it might be because... Uh, Pact have just been charging them. Uh, uh, well, maybe. I mean, <laughs> Darko <laughs> certainly seemed to think that he had some kind of knowledge that someone else didn't, maybe, by rushing up Banana like that. Astro, you know, too experienced, you have to assume, to allow any of those sorts of shenanigans to happen. And there are the two players now just going to fall back onto that B-bomb site, just hold it a little bit more passively. Lunatic who is on the other side of the map, and ready to rotate to be should he need to, and he's actually starting to do so. Uh, is only on the glass cannon orb, but that smoke's going to draw him back over towards Archside just a little bit as it looks like the fake from Fierce Esports has been completed and the B push is about to begin. Well, let's see how this goes. No utility has been thrown just yet, but we're waiting. I think uh, <clears throat> they're just waiting for all of their players to come here. It looks like actually... Uh, Morals is starting to rotate back, but Lunatic gets a quick, fresh uh, kill there, and it starts the bloodbath. Everyone starts falling down. Site is secured for e uh, Fierce, but now it's down to Morals, who's here by himself. 1v3. Tries to spray through the smoke, and he's going to find Stanley through it, but not quite. The bomb planter bomb falls down, and it's going to be a 2v2 situation here. Frame Astro, though, combined much lower health than their CT counterparts so let's see how they can hold on to this bomb astro giving away his position there with the scope morals heard him but can he get to him without falling down he can't astro now trying to find the second kill but sobble is going to find it nearly gets picked up there as well smoke is going to go down and sobble is trying to find it but fred's too smart for that you can't trick me that easy and uh, another win for the brits putting number four on the board yeah, Fry knows just too well uh, the position of that bomb there. He's only on 7 HP. And you're starting to think that, obviously, uh, Sobol doesn't have that information. that He's only on 7, but a little bit more info in that kind of situation. Sobol maybe doesn't uh, throw that smoke down there and go for the defuse. Maybe he actually does decide to take that duel in the 1v1 anyway. It's a close one, but it still goes the way of Fierce. Now, let's have a look at the economy for both sides. It's still looking slightly ropey for Fierce. Astro would be able to... Uh, drop another one, you'd assume, should they lose this one. Stanley does have quite a lot of money as well, but Echo's only on that $1,000 mark. Meanwhile, it is looking like Pact will have called this timeout, and they're probably using it to discuss what they're going to do next round as opposed to this one. They've got the two HEs on Darko and Sydney, which I'm expecting to go straight up banana or mid to eliminate those or try and deal some early damage at least, maybe get a lucky kill over towards banana. But other than that, it's going to be a full eco from Pact. Uh, potentially stacking a bomb site. We know they like to do that on the B site of Mirage in the last one. But it'll be an interesting decision to see what they actually go with. Well, it'll also be an interesting uh, experience to see if they're going to play Scarecrows like they did last time. Uh, yeah, that could also be another decision. It's going to be one for the ages anyway, as they really use all of this time. Uh, so just a reminder for... All of you lovely viewers joining us who decided not to watch map one that did go the way of Pact. It was their pick and they won it 16 to 9. 
And now we're on Inferno. It's Fierce's map pick. They're currently ahead four to one. Fierce won the pistol round, the subsequent two. And they've just uh oh, I've forgotten the word for it. I know the word for it. They've won what the reset round. Reset. That's what it's called in Counter Strike. Right. They've won the reset round after Pact secured one and have put Pact's economy on the back foot yet again. The winner of this series, as we know, Robbie, they go to the finals of the ESCA. The finals? 31. They go so, to the finals, Ben. Finals. The big the big one. So it looks like it was actually Fierce, who were the people who uh, caused the timeout here. It looks like... Uh, which player's gone walkies there? <clears throat> so, uh, uh, yes, it would say so. So I'm just looking to see... Uh, what the winners of these games would actually get and why they're competing so fiercely. So it does look like everybody has already qualified for the lower end of the Mountain Dew League in 31 relegation segment. So the top six teams from uh, the ESEA advanced season go into that and then should they then fight through the relegation bracket will qualify for the Mountain Dew League season 32. And the, meanwhile, the winner, though, the winner of that grand final, not only do they get 4500 US dollars, 4500 guaranteed place in the MDL season 32. So a lot to play for Absolutely. either way. I mean, Mountain Dew League, you know, it's been going on for, for quite a while. It's quite a popular league. You know, we, we see, um, correct me if I'm wrong, there aren't too many professional level teams in there but quite a lot of high level semi pro players it depends you could you quite often see in the mdl a lot of the lower level you know at bottom top 10 kind of teams might be participating in it sure um certainly have a look actually and tell you i, I know that i think vitality played in the last uh mdl season Stay sure, but target. but in general, you're looking towards yeah, the uh, um, you know high semi pro, low pro end. Yeah, so uh, so, it's, so a, it's quite a big uh, stepping stone. Oh, it's a step up from this game certainly. So I'm just <laughs> for the European teams. Sprout uh, plays first or second alongside Vitality. Uh, we're looking at teams like Virtus Pro were in there um, after their sort of four recently. Epsilon Chaos Esports Club. So some of these names Ents actually. Uh, finished 18th. I think they dropped out of it though, uh, but don't quote me on that one. Sure. But and then of course you get to go to the global challenge. Should you do well in the MDL season? Either way, though, both these teams fighting. The pause has continued for a long time. It doesn't look like it's because of a disconnect on the side <clears> of fear. What do you think is uh, going on? Do we think maybe uh, a power cut? I'd hope no. I'd could, hope not. Rather, sorry. Could could it be? Oh, no. No, he's back. He's back. So is, uh, it, is it Stanley or Fry that disconnected? Fry. Fry. I see. So Fry, he was, uh, you know, he was frozen in time. You know, he, he he got caught in a capsule whilst delivering a pizza. And now he's uh, he's in the uh, future. Of course. Right. Yeah. He's, you know, he, he, <laughs> he's in the future now. And he's he's back trying to fix everything for this. He's in the future and he's come back from the future. He's gone, guys, guys, listen, listen. All we have to do is win this series and UK CS is going to be big again and the rest of his team are just pissing themselves. Well, yeah, they're, they're all laughing. <laughs> right, but, but he's seen it. Fre Frey knows. He right? knows. He he's knows been sent greatness. back in time because in the future that he went to, they didn't win this game. And, uh, you know, British esports on the CS level is a laughing stock. To a higher degree uh, than it is now. Wow, I, I didn't even think that was. So he's possible. come back in time to prevent that from happening. Wow, he's got a lot to do anyway. It does look like his team have the advantage. Another map to go for Fizz yet, even if they are to win this round, uh, not this round, this map. Even so, so packed. They've gone for two grenades and two smoke grenades. So some kind of stack defense, I'm assuming. Maybe try and go for a ninja defuse. Yeah, they're taking the one smoke on Morels. He's got the CZ and armor holding A on his own. Everybody else is going to challenge Banana. There go the opening two grenades, but Fierce, too smart for them. They do actually manage to wait those out and not take any damage whatsoever as they start moving over towards B. Well, you're right on what you said about, you know, Pact wanting to play this eco round all together as they're going to form up a little uh, firing totem squad uh, here right in the pool. And 
Oh my god. <laughs> Stanley turns the corner and just a barrage of suppressed bullets fly straight towards him now. It's going to be uh, uh, Fierce still in the driver's seat. Is there going to take down the Lurk? Morals falls down. And it uh, looks like Pact is going to choose this time to actually move when uh, faced with the knowledge of the bomb being somewhere else. You're going to see a little bit of an engagement between Fry and Sobble here. But uh, the main fight is going to happen over towards the A site as Alex takes down that chicken that was menacing him so badly. As a and Astro is going to take down Sydney, going to take him all the way down under. Uh, yeah, now. well, obviously, hopefully not all the way to Australia because his ping would be horrible. But I mean, either way, if Sobol can get one kill here... It's okay, right? It was a full eco with a couple of investments. They did have to move straight off that B site straight away. It's one of the things when you only put one player on the A site, you are it's called a gamble stack for a reason. And once you, your opponent figures that out, they know that there's very little contention to be had on the other side. Morels unfortunately didn't actually manage to clean anyone up himself in that A site defense. So all in all, just an easy anti eco from Fierce. Sure, and um, you know, obviously didn't pay out for them. Uh, <clears throat> pay out for them, uh, you know, as much as they wanted to. They do get one kill in the way of Stanley, um, but everyone else just goes, oh, I see you're doing this. Well, I guess I'll just uh, take my ball and go play over here. And they did that. And then uh, I couldn't get anything else, and they all just died one by one. And now we see them in this uh, position four rounds down, so we haven't seen from Pact uh, in this series so far. Sydney does find one kill, though. So he's looking to start off the round strong. Right along with yeah. Sydney now. He's going to pick up that AWP from Astro. Putting him in a little bit of a better position. Two AWPs now in possession of the T's. And Morals is going to find Eccles as well. This is looking good for these players. Now, it's going to be up to Sydney to see if he can find some of these kills. He's got the AWP. He's dealing with a Jiggle Peak. Starco finds one. Alex is going to fall down. <clears throat> but Stanley's going to find the return, and Sydney and Fry are going to have a bit of a discussion, and it's going to end in a heated exchange of bullets. That's not going to go well for either of them. Yeah, Fry left in the 1v3 here. He does have the bomb available, but he's got an AWP in his hands, and that's really not a weapon you want once again. This is the, you know, we saw they had, it was Astro the last time he was in a 1v3 with an AWP on Mirage. He nearly managed to take that one, but didn't win it because the AWP was a weapon he had. He has managed to pick up a Krieg now, though. Just avoids contact with the player second mid. Pack got a really good advantage early on in this round due to a really good play from uh, uh, Sydney and Darker together. Lunatic's going to get that AWP shot every day. A nice clean one from him, but yeah, excellent opening. Sydney just throws the perfect flash there. Um, Darko pushes in, eliminates the one player who's holding aggressively in front of the smoke. The other player is behind the smoke, so can't refrag for him, and that gives Pack the free AWP that they can use to defend that angle. Economy from Fear still looking good, though. They can afford to fall by into this one with Stanley having to drop down onto that Mac 10 But Pack, they need to get a couple of rounds straight together here on the board. Perhaps even tie it up if they want to start shifting the momentum in their favor. Sure. I mean, if I'm um, Fry, you know, at the end of that round with an AWP, 30 seconds on the board, he chooses to pick up the Krieg. Doesn't quite pay out for him, but, you, you know, I can kind of see what he's going for. Um, I don't nearly have any sort of confidence like that, but apparently these players do as the apartment murder spree is uh, going to take place. Two players falling down from both teams there in a short amount of time. Only two coming out. Lunatic and Alex at very low health, but Lunatic making sure that he's the lone survivor of that atrocity in apartments, and he's going to take down his rival. Alex falls, and now it's down to the other two remaining players on the T side to try and push here. Looking for this player on the site. Sydney's going to find Stanley, and it's all down to Astro now. 11 HP on this player. Sydney's going to pull out the USPS, and he's going to fall down. Packed. Catch so the clinical ground. there. So, so clinical. Was it Sydney there defending that, um, sure, that B bomb site? Yep. Yeah. What what a what a hero, right? So for some reason, I don't know what reason, um, Astro decides that what he wants to do is go for a jumping orb shot. Um, or at least jump up somewhere and get himself uh, an advantage, uh, a vantage point to try and use that orb from. Uh Sydney 
just in the middle of the apex of the jump. Doesn't manage to kill Astro, but does dink him straight away, which means that after he deals with the other rifler, he's in a 1v1 that's already been won for him, essentially. Not only is it against an AWP, but it's an AWP with low HP, and he's close angle with the pistol out, you know? He sure. continues spraying the angle, gets his USPS out, and just does a really good job there, too. It was actually that first shot accuracy from Sydney, anchoring that B-bomb site that went so well for them, and Fierce, that was their best chance of winning that round. They'd isolated, they'd done the right tactical call, they'd isolated the 2v1, but somehow they just don't both peak him at the same time and they both end up falling to him. So really regrettable, but I like what I'm seeing from Fierce. They've gone for an eco for once. And I'm very happy about this. Oh my goodness, <laughs> destruction rains down in Banana as Sydney and Darko absolutely obliterate the entirety of Fierce who've just stacked up ready behind that smoke and just... Whew! Mama! Yeah, not so happy about Fierce being eliminated entirely after I commend them for doing a force buy, but, you know, uh, not doing a force buy, rather. But sometimes that's just the nature of the beast. Packed. Ooh! Lunatic getting incredibly aggressive with that one. Should be immediately punished for it. And Sydney getting eliminated over towards Banana as well. And now, Packed are in the, a man down situation at the moment. And it's been a little bit of a signature so far of their CT side on Inferno, getting these aggressive angles. Darko and Sydney have been doing it a lot towards Banana. And Lunatic now taking it aggressive up towards mid instead of over on the balcony position. But just doesn't go his way. He looks the wrong way. I'm assuming he's expecting some kind of second mid push and just gets punished by the deep mid player. Morales is going to go back for it, but Astro takes his head off with a Krieg and that leaves us in a two versus four. I mean, it's definitely not looking good for Pact. I mean, after such a strong performance in that last eco uh, round, you know, just completely wiping out the entirety of Fierce. Looks like they've gotten their second wind and they're saying we will not go down so easily in this round. We've got guns too, you know. Fierce is now pushing on to this B-bomb site here. Darko just hiding behind these coffins. <laughs> I mean, it's not going to matter. He's, he's going to fall down there. And uh, Sobble, he knows when he's defeated. Making the right call here, I think. Uh, yeah, certainly. Yeah, falling back. Yeah, absolutely. He's just going to take that rifle away. He's got utility as well to save. Whether he'll be able to save it or not is a different question. Now, where would you run to in this position, Robbie? If it's me and I'm, th all right, I'm on A site right now, where are they not going to expect me to be? I might just beeline it all the way to... T-Aps? Mm, maybe T-Aps, maybe Mexico. I mean, I, I think Mexico is the first place you look if you're looking for a fleeing uh, fugitive. That's know? true. If you're looking for a rat, check the sewers. He's running from the law. But uh, Sobble does find, <laughs> does find one. He's not going to go to Mexico. He's, uh, you know, he's 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 decided to to stay his ground, and he does find one return kill there, and keeps the AWP. Who uh, he's going to throw yeah, it over to actually, Lunatic, who's been, yeah. you know, doing some really nice stuff with it. Very important there at the end, actually, that they picked up uh, that AWP. Um, just another little upgrade that he can pass on to Lunatic now, which means that. Uh, you know, it's a much lesser degree of punishment that Lunatic receives for his push in the last round. He would have been forced off that weapon had Lunatic not picked it up. Although Sydney perhaps would have dropped it to him. He does have just enough money. But it's hard to tell. Either way, though, uh, things looking good for Fierce on, uh, on the T side of Inferno, no less. Pack, though, they don't look ever out of it. They might be behind, but they never look out of the game. No, for sure. And here we're going to see Darko in the same position that we saw Sydney a couple rounds ago. Doesn't manage to get any kills, but Astro falls down to 4 HP here. Stanley going to pick up the other defender of B site, but Morals going to find him a turn kill. Lunatic on the AWP, going to pick one up for himself. Morals now finds a second kill, and that's going to leave Fierce in a very rough position. Astro here, as I just said, very low HP. Alex, the only one here who's got any chance of surviving any more than a single shot. And they're going to slowly be making their way up Banana. Astro still keeping a hold of this bomb. I think maybe the, the play here is to pass the bomb over to Alex and try and use Astro as bait. Trying to get him onto the site, but it looks like they're taking their, their time. Trying to clear out the site as nicely as they can, but they're going to open themselves up to this pincer maneuver as Lunatic holding this long angle. Morals is going to find one, and now it's down to the 4 HP Astro. He's going to get shot in the back by Lunatic. And a very clean round there by Pact, taking them down. Morals doing absolute work. A perfectly timed rotation as well from Lunatic. It, it, it was almost like they were reading each other's minds. As soon as Ash got in position, 
uh, to where he might be looking to threaten this B bomb site. You see, as his little marker on the minimap is moving over, you just see the little marker of Lunatic moving in tandem. And as Astro gets in position, Lunatic then has the angle of the CT. No smokes available in that, um, not pose plant situation, but end of round situation for Fierce, which means that they can't get on that B site. And very good B anchorage going on from Pact overall, actually. We saw it from Sydney before. We saw it rails just then they're holding that b-bomb site relatively well but fierce esports are managing their economy a lot more look they've kept it pretty much above 2k a player uh, around the board so they're sort of willing to let the scoreline be tied up here as the a-bomb site attack comes in and come in it will but Sobble's going to break it up but Frey and Alex picking up two kills for themselves Morales is going to find one and Alex and Sydney are going to trade it out as well Sydney the only man left standing around here Alex with a beautiful headshot there the deagle just ripping the head straight off of Sydney and it's going to be a nice situation here for the T's to plant but it looks like the bomb has been left behind now oh. Alex is going to find Darko uh, sorry Darko is going to find Alex oh. from the back what just happened Oh no, how this round What just happened? Oh, I can't believe this has been allowed to happen. This is another one of these situations where Fierce Esports look like they've won the round, but Pact somehow find their way back into it there. So the flank comes in there, comes in from short, right? They have, uh, they have Alex on the bomb site. They're having him push aggressively because they suspect he might be towards Arch, right? So if he can go over there and listen out for some footsteps, maybe they get more information. But in that time, Darko just comes up short, gets the pixel angle on Astro. Well, hey, kills Astro first, gets the pixel angle on him. And because he's only on four HP, one bullet takes him down. He then goes to peak. Um, sorry, Alex was the player on site. He then goes to peak Astro who's in the pit, but Astro is in the middle of repositioning to get the angle on him. He doesn't realize that he's being faced so quickly and falls down to that pixel headshot angle. What an incredible play. I, I It happens so fast, I had to watch it back on the stream. I, I like, <laughs> oh my goodness, like, how do you see? Like, just aim straight down the middle of the, uh, the hay barrel there and just gets a beautiful headshot. I mean, my God, what a play there from PAC definitely shows you why they have made it and definitely shows you that they deserve to be here in the semi-finals. Now Sydney showing us maybe another decent uh, B-side defense here, but only manages to pick up one before he's taken down by Frey, and now it's up to Morals and Lunatic to try and bring it back. Morals trying to spam through this glass here. Not going to quite find anything too much. Lunatic going to get smoked back off, and the bomb is down, ticking, ticking, ticking away. And it's going to be a tight retake. The CTs are going to want to win this round. It looks like they're going to try and commit now. As uh, Morals is pushing onto the site. He's got three to find. But Astro's going to find him first. All down to Lunatic. Looks like he's going to want to try and back off. But uh, he's not going to get any easy way to do it. Does find one. Astro's going to fall down. But only five seconds remaining. And he's going to get away from that before the bomb takes him down. But Frey's got not going to let him. He wants the kill. No bomb kill for you. Lunatic is going to fall. Putting round number seven on the board for Fierce. Round 14. I'm uh, I'm scratching my head at the moment as to the tactical decision there from Pac to actually go for that one. They had no money left in the bank for them to actually be able to do anything in this round. And this round isn't the last round of the half. So I'm not entirely sure what they were doing. If they'd have saved those weapons, um, gone for a decent buy and potentially even just saved them into the last round of the half, they could have guaranteed themselves maybe at least one or at least a fighting chance at one. But now they have to force by the last two in the half. Very confused as to who made that decision. Um, especially when they were smoked off for so long and they had such little time to try and retake from CT. So very confusing from my point of view anyway. It does look like Fierce is going to take this one nice and convincingly. And we saw in that last round uh, the difference in your ability to attack the bomb site when you have a CT smoke versus when you don't have a CC smoke. This round went absolutely perfect for them. They managed to isolate Sydney having only lost one player um, and then consolidate that three versus two retake situation. Okay. Sydney. Uh, okay. okay, Sydney throughout this entire series has been showing us that the Deagle is not okay. 
<laughs> yeah, the pistol work from Pack has been phenomenal. Him and um, him and Alex have both been doing incredible work with those deagles, actually. So credit where credit's due. I mean, uh, I was left without words after that shot. I mean, it was beautiful. But Darko and Sydney here, they're looking like they're going to just try and save this armor and these pistols that they've got. Looks like the T's might be trying to, to hunt them down. AK being saved here by Darko. If you can hold on to it, that's going to be a really nice pickup from the uh, T player. And he is going to be able to grab it. It's going to be passed off to, it looks like Sobble. Yeah, well, they're going to drop what they can, right? You're assuming you players that have been playing well. So I want to see this K in the Sydney or uh, Morals, to be honest with you. Darko taking it for himself, I guess. That's what you could do. Sydney is on an SMG, but I'm still perplexed as to why they went for it the round before last. They've got no money in the bank for the last round of this half now, but well, Darko's opening things up, so maybe they win anyway. Well, that's two for Darko, so definitely the right choice for this AK, whether or not it was the... Uh, uh, correct thing to do in theory it's definitely worked out in practice and uh, it's gonna put packed in a decent position they have forced this round so i mean whatever they can get even if they don't win off this uh is gonna be great but they put themselves in a pretty good position to uh to win haven't quite been able to pick up the weapons that they made the t's drop just yet but morals finds the sg or as you like to call it the krieg oh look at morals position as well Oh, is he going to find it? Stanley, he walks in. He's going to do a double take, but he isn't quite going to be able to hit the shot. Stanley, he's going to fall down. Poor dude. He he does a little double take. You see him as he comes into the room. He checks the angle. But you know when you check a, an angle and you're like, oh, I'll check it. But there's no way anyone's going to be there. Right. Yeah, so you kind of like... sort of checking it for the sake of things at this yeah. point. Oh, you've got to check it. And, and you know, he, he sees him, but like, he just doesn't believe it. He's like, wait, hold on a second. He somehow got another flanking kill. How is this possible? <laughs> How has Morales been allowed to do this? How has he been given this much freedom, not just in this round, but in several rounds on Mirage as well? Fry's now left in a one versus five because Morales is allowed to get one flanking kill from the T-apps, and then somehow they just let him walk over uh, to T-side of mid and just peek somebody from there, and nobody communicates that he might be moving around in that area. Yeah, I was about to, yeah, I was about to say definitely a lack of communication from uh, from Pack there as Frey's gonna try and get the spray down. He's gonna find one nearly a second, but Sobble's gonna put an end to that bomb. Does go down in favor of Pact, but yeah, definitely some communication uh, needs to be figured out by Fierce there because that was not okay. Yeah, um they need to tighten things up. They really shouldn't have been losing that round now. Admittedly, that did come down to very good positioning for Morales. So that's not something that you can essentially put all at the feet of Fierce Esports in that one. But mistakes were certainly made. And this is their map. They need to win it to push the third, remember. Pact, they don't have to worry about anything. They win this map, they're off to the finals, right? They've secured that extra little bit of prize money for themselves. And they're looking at potentially getting straight qualification for MDL 32. So it's really the pressure on Fierce at the moment. They're one round ahead, but they should be two. And I'm not sure how much it's going to mentally affect them that last one. If they lose this pistol as well... The momentum could start to shift the other way. I thought Pact were stronger on their T side than their CT side on Mirage. So if Pact are just a T sided team, then this could be very dangerous for Fierce coming up. I mean, absolutely. I, I think the, the rest of this game very much depends on how well Fierce can play these uh, CT angles, how well Pact can play this T side. I, I've always been a big advocate for um, how a great CT sided team is a great mirage uh, sorry a great inferno team because inferno right. is built for cts you know it's angles upon angles and you pick your level of aggressiveness and you fall back depending right if you're a ct and you want to be aggressive there are angles that you can go to and then you can fall back safely if you want to play more passively there are angles further back that you can go to and how well fierce decides to play <sighs> these ho oh! as uh, <laughs> alex is going to pick up one <laughs> straight away he's definitely feeling those aggressive angles um, but how well Fizz can play the CT side is definitely going to be the deciding factor on if this is going to go to vertical or not. Yeah, certainly. Um, 
they they got to hit the shots. Alex has shown us a, a little taste of what Fierce need to do for the rest of the thing. He's going to be pressured once again, though, as he smokes come onto the A site. How many shots is he going to be able to land? That's the question. Flash coming in now. Well, it's going to be down to Alex. He's going to be the first responder on the scene. No bullets are going to be hit in either side, but uh, Lunatic's going to take a chunk there from Astro as they try to pass Lunatic, hitting a jumping headshot, it looks like. And that's going to be their opening. They're going to push through Archway here as they get oh. an opening frag, and Sydney takes two on B. All the defenders are taken down now, and it looks like this is going to be a free win for Pact. It's going to have to be some magic coming out of Alex and Stanley here. If they want to retake this B site, Sydney coming straight into the line of fire. He's going to get taken down by Stan. Bomb is down, however, and they are on a ticking timer. Three T players here on the response. They're all hanging out in this angle. Alex looking the complete wrong way. Stanley finds oh. one. Stanley finds oh. two. Not going to be enough, though. Sobble takes down the third, and that's going to be round one on the second half for Pact. What a roller coaster of emotions that round was. The opening kill from Alex up mid. Incredibly good job. That then gets traded out for Pact on the A side. And you think, right, this is it. The A side's under attack. But no, they leave one lurker in the form of Sydney over towards that B bomb site. And he kills both defending players, completely opening it up from a CT push as well, allowing them to consolidate it, forces the CTs to go back through Banana. And then it looks like, you know, he <laughs> looked like absolute hero hours for the moment for Fierce. It looked like they were going to pull it back from the brink, but just narrowly missing out on it in that one. And we see it again now, I'm starting to worry, Robbie. They're starting to lose rounds and they look <clears> like they're falling back on this force buy option. Now it is second round, force buys are more viable than any other time, I just hope that this isn't a trend that continues for the rest of this half. I mean, I'm right there with you, man. I mean, especially after Fry's trip to the future, I'm hoping that they can uh, learn from their mistakes. As Stanley and uh, Sobble separated by just a fading smoke, and that's going to be the first encounter of the round. Sobble's going to take it with only 16 health left to his name. As the rest of the T's are grouping up around B site, another smoke is going to come through from Astro just to delay that little extra bit of time. But it looks like the responding smokes are coming through from Pact. And they're going to use that as an opportunity to run away. Look at this. They forced the rotation from <gasps> Eccles. What? It's worked. But Alex finds something there. The Swag 7 going to come in clutch. But he's going to spot four players coming around the corner. No one's there in time to help him. They already forced the rotation out of Eccles. And he's not going to be there in time. The SMG isn't quite going to fall short. And that's going to be it. Looks like Fierce is conceding this one. Sobor and Alex spent about the entire duration of a smoke grenade sat either sides of, a, of, it, of the smoke from each other. One of them was watching one door to balcony and the other one was watching the other door. They were in the same little tiny room in that little connecting room up on balcony as you leave T apps for the entire duration of the smoke. And it just faded. And Sobor was looking straight at Alex. He had a good one or two seconds to react, but just doesn't do it in time. Doesn't expect him to be sat in that corner. And that allows him to get the kill. Unfortunately, it's not going to be enough for Fierce to win the round. They are being hunted now by these Mac 10s. Every player lost to one of these is a real pain. Just one, fortunately, and it was just one pistol player, but still, that's more money lost for Fierce. That's more money gained for Pact in the SMG kill. Oh, no. And please stop force buying every round. I beg you, Fierce. Just take these weapons into battle and I'll be a happy man. I am I... a happy man indeed. Thank you very yes. much. There, I was a little worried there, but uh, we only see a few pistols being picked up on the side of Fierce. They're keeping their MP7. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, that MP9 with them. And it looks like maybe they're going to take it a little slower. What, what, what do you think the, the call is here for Fierce? What, what do you think that they need to do? Well, at the moment, Fierce haven't really... We haven't actually seen a full gun round from them to be able to do anything. So we don't know what their default strategies are. It may just be that they do rely on these gun round default strats. And they are good enough to carry them through the rest of Inferno. We're not going to see that until next round, though. So with these pistols, I like the decision that they've made. They're playing close angles here with Stanley to try and fake some A presence. But look at this. Alex has the bomb. He's sat on that bomb and he's just waiting for it. He's got a CZ as well. He could deal so much damage if these players attack the B bomb site and then come back for the bomb as an afterthought. And there we are. Now he's got an AK. Turn around just in time. Molotov down to delay the push on him, though. The other side's going to get smoked off, but they can't get this bomb back yet. Time's ticking down. What are the rest of the players from Fears going to do, though, to try and capitalize on this situation? I mean, it looks like Alex has fallen back to this angle, but the T's know he's there. Darko's going to find him out. 
He's going to fall down. It's a little bit unfortunate. I think Alex falls a little bit too far back there from the action. Does have that uh, SMG available to him, but just doesn't really use it to, uh, to its full use. A little bit unfortunate there. Maybe a little bit of a misplay, but it looks like Pact here. Now looking to put down the bomb. Goes down. And it looks like Eccles is happy just saving this uh, creek. Uh, yeah. You, we, we calling it a creek? Creek. I'm happy to call it a creek. Well, like the word creek. you want to explain than... that to me? Creek? Uh, no, because oh, I can't okay. remember the quite origins of that <laughs> weapon. I'm pretty sure it's because the T's just use it to sort of run and gun on bomb sites, you know, uh, have that little advantage. And maybe uh, chat could grace us with the origins of the form Krieg. I think I heard Sponge saying it first. So perhaps it's just the Australian name uh, for the weapon and we've all adopted it. Either way, I don't think he's going to be able to keep that weapon going to the next round. But I mean, more happened in that round than I thought they were going to be able to do. Alex, it looked like potentially with that bomb play, they might have had some potential to do some serious damage. But unfortunately, just the two players taken down. Good enough for me for an eco. And now we're going to see the full gun round come out and we're going to see the extent of what Fierce's CT side can actually do. I mean, let's hope it's uh, been better than what they've been able to show us recently. Uh, I don't think they've won a round on the CT side quite yet. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, Fierce have not yet claimed a CT round, but there have only been two of them so far. So there is that to bear in mind. This will be the three. first official gun round, and this is going to tell us a lot. Or oh, three, my, my apologies. Um, but yeah, uh, it is going to tell us a lot about what Fierce are going to be able to put up with in terms of a fight. If they lose this one, look at their money, Robbie. $50 on three players, $100 on two. This is the full gun round that they're fighting for. They don't have to worry so much about the lack of head armor because there's no SMGs about, but oh, Sydney's no, going to take the first one just like that. <clears throat> Fry just... It's dangerous now. Like, I, I can't fathom what possessed Fry to just run straight down banana there. Uh, I'm assuming he thought he was covered by that smoke uh, to give him a slightly more aggressive position, but the spray down just lands perfectly and uh, just gets taken out. Well, let's hope that his teammates can make up for it. Weapon is now dropped and it looks like the T's are starting to push down Banana. Astro's got a shot lined perfectly on Darko. If only he could see through that wall. But uh, let's see what they can make of it. Astro... He's going to get caught out here if all these T's push at once, and it's looking like that's exactly what's going oh, to happen. Oh, collateral hours. What? Yeah. Lunatic takes a shot, but it's not going to take him down. Astro manages to find a couple grenades to save him a little bit of time. He's going to be able to fall back now, and it looks like the T's have delayed their push a little bit as Astro is looking to readjust this angle. Darko trying to find something, but it's actually going to trigger the uh, rotation away to a site now. Now that Sobel's taken down Alex, it's a free site. Eccles here, he's rotated on, and the bomb is going to go down on A. Bomb has been planted, and now the CTs are aware. Eccles finds one. Darku falls down. Can he find Sydney? No, he cannot. Krieg takes down Eccles, and it's now up to Astro, but I think he just kind of wants to save this orb here. If I was him, I would just try and take... Certainly. Yeah, absolutely, for the sake of this economy. Sydney's looking like he's going to try and go for the push. I think he's, uh, he knows that he's probably going to be holding from Coffin. Starts to go for that peak. Astro's going to find the shot. But he's going to be defending from all angles. It's like watching an episode of Shark Week, Ben. They're smelling the blood. They want it. The shot's off the mark. And Astro's going to fall down. No AWP for him. And Fierce sinking further and further down this hole. Yeah, indeed. Indeed, packed, really showing how strong their T-sides actually are on these maps. Talking about the Krieg that we were earlier, I'd just like to thank people in chat for informing us uh, that it was called the Krieg in 1.6 and that Krieg also means war in German. So thank you guys for helping us out with that little bit of information. Uh, I'm not sure how much of a... Uh, how much... Um, I'm trying to think of a way to phrase this now. You know, whether Fierce Esports are going to be any more participants in this Krieg over Inferno at the moment. There we are using the word... I'm trying, trying to fit my German in somehow. Good job. But either way, the, the <clears throat> bottom line is Fierce are in trouble. You nailed it, Ben. But, uh, <laughs> here they come. Alex just trying to find something through the smoke. He hears uh, the response from Morals. Looks like a little bit of a slower round from Pact as Morals is going to take the head off of Alex. He's going to find himself a very convincingly closed casket funeral 
for the CT player. Don't want to be seeing that big head hole. And Sydney's going to fall down as... Sorry, Sydney isn't going to fall down. Sydney and Darko are going to find kills of their own. As VT's secure B site. Two players yeah. remaining on Fierce. And... Ben, it's not looking good, is it? Yeah, you expect normally that flower pot's boost is good for at least one frag from that position. And I think the player who was boosted up there did actually see one player he could have killed and decided to wait. And unfortunately, he then got peeked after and it was a little bit of an awkward exchange. Did finally get eliminated. But playing two players on the CT side um, of that B site defense when smokes are coming down is incredibly difficult. The money is going to be back for Fierce though. So they are going to have at least... One more buy round in this game. Should they lose this one and Nico another, they will have sort of one final one, I would assume, to prevent map point and series point from being arrived. But the timeout has been called either way. Fierce Esports, they've got a lot to talk about with each other. And what are they going to do? I think, personally, Stanley's got 6850 and he hasn't bought yet. So I think they're debating over whether a second orc gets bought here. It doesn't. Um, Alex doesn't actually have a weapon available to him so no one's going to be able to drop for him either so just the usps he's not even going to upgrade which makes me think he's saving for orp in the next one regardless <clears throat> i mean only other explanation actually does find an xm 111 there the auto shotty uh pushing it a little bit late <laughs> i mean it's an eco weapon if he gets three kills right that's how it works that's true <laughs> interesting pick up there from the uh, the CT players. We'll definitely be interested in seeing how he uses it as a whole of the T squad here pushing out of mid. They're looking to take control of the A bomb site. And Astro trying to find Sidekin. Misses the orb shot. Oh my goodness, he does find Sydney, but it's not going to be enough. Darko is going to pick him up there in Arch. Now pushing on to the site. Darko finds one. Stanley falls down. And it's all down to Alex, who is going to get spotted out by Sobel, who's too distracted. By the players on site. And that's going to be a very clean and very efficient take of the A site there. Only one player falling down. And it looks like fear, the rest of Fierce are uh, staying in their little corner. Yeah, uh, it does appear so either way. Um, what do Fierce do now? That's the question. They're running out of time to sort of change things up as well. I didn't expect Pac to have such a dominant T side. Second gun round victory going to be going their way as well. I think the only... I think there are two tools left in Fierce Esports' tool shed in the back of the garden. One of them is a double AWP strategy, which with their economy, they won't be able to do next round. They might be able to push the round after, but certainly with lacking utility to say the least. And that's if they hard eco on this one. The second option I think that they have is some out and out aggression. We haven't seen it yet straight through the A site apartments, maybe into second mid. We saw Morales doing it so well um previously when he was on the ct side especially in that one round that allowed them to clean up the half so maybe a little bit more aggression uh through second mid might be the answer to their woes but they force bought into this one with the rifles so whatever happens they must win it oh darko gets slapped in the face oh. by a molotov there and uh, the nades from astro are going to finish up lunatic lot of damage coming through from the grenades Marl says find Stanley though in the back and that's going to trigger the rotation from these two players in uh, Banana. They're going to make their way back over towards the A site as it looks like the T's are looking to take it. No response yet in terms of rotations from the CT's. Nades are coming on. It looks like the calls come through as it looks like Fry might be looking to rotate. Astro finds one, but he's going to get taken down by Darko. And that's finally going to trigger the rotation. But Alex here, he's in a really awkward position. Someone's going to spot him straight out and he's going to take him down. Alex takes a, uh, a very unfortunate fall there. Darko finding Fry on the rotation and it's now all up to Eccles. Can he take this now? Darko. Going to try and flash him out. Flash doesn't quite come off in time. And Eccles is going to find one. This could be it. Finds the AK. Smoke is going to come through. A collective... What is that? 15 HP on Pact. And Eccles is not quite able to find it. Sydney takes him down. Just very unfortunate there. Imagine winning a round with 15 HP combined. Yeah. 
Unfortunately uh, for Echoes, did have the Molotov. He could potentially have taken one of those players out with just utility. All of the utility for Fierce was dumped down banana, basically straight at the start of that round. He throws the Molotov on balcony, hoping there'll be a player holding it. Just unlucky. Luck of the draw, there wasn't that time. 14 to 8 now to your opponents. Famases and MP9s have come out. Alex is getting eliminated straight away as well. And doesn't look like you're going to be going to Vertigo, ladies and gentlemen, because Pact have been absolutely dominant in this series. So I have a couple of things that I'd like to say about the differences in these two teams is, uh, is placed on and a couple of the reasons why I think why uh, Pact, other than, you know, the first half of, uh, of, of this game and the uh, a little bit the second half of Mirage, I, I think some of the main differences have been communication, teamwork, positioning in, uh, in terms of morals and his flanking and uh, utility we talked about it a lot on mirage during their t takes <clears throat> but the the amount of uh, utility use and uh, just you know smoke and uh, flash positioning on pact has made such an impact in every single one of these rounds that i just don't think we've seen uh, the same amount of uh, usefulness out of this utility from uh, from esports uh, from esports from this <laughs> well, yeah, I, they've been using it well over towards Banana on Inferno. I think that last round they did actually have a really good usage of utility and it potentially set them up to win a lot of things. But it just came down to individual aim in that last round from Pack. The, the entry fragging was incredible. Darko winning that eight, you know, that opening duel gets dinked by the M4 and just lands the opening headshot as mm. he's strafing out. That's incredible anyway. The, the, the individual aim coming out from Pack just has been so good. And then when you combine it with, like you say, with that utility, with the positioning, it's just been too powerful. The T side of Pack is just too formidable, fierce to be able to deal with. Now, credit where credit's due, they've done decent enough on their own T sides, and Morel's just going to take out Alex straight away on that A bomb site as well. But Pack have looked very in control when they're on the offensive. Absolutely, and it looks like this could be the last round, ladies and gentlemen. Actually, Morals falling down. Echoes finds two there. It looks like this could maybe be a comeback. It's all or nothing now. Echoes has got to find three players as he's the only one defending on this site. He's unfortunately going to fall down, but here comes Astro. Does manage to rotate in time, but Taco holding the long angle. It's looking more and more desperate for this CT team. Frey gets taken down to 13 HP. He has an AK and it is 1v2 right now. It's not gonna matter. Sydney's gonna hit the final shot. And ladies and gentlemen, your first team heading to the ESEA Advanced Season 31 Finals is none other than Pact. They've had a phenomenal two games here.